Dracula, this girl over here, she got story after story about Damon and all the good things he did for her. He went out of his way for people for no reason. It was never for a pat on the back or anything like that. He was not that, he's not that type of person. I met him when we were in high school. I met him at some party, I guess. We were like 15. He was very charismatic. He, um, he's very kind. He's very, very fun. He can make anybody laugh anytime. He started to remodel these apartments that are right down the street with uh, two of his other friends. And uh, my uh, garage caught fire one day. That's the first day I met him. And then we got to know each other and, uh, and I let him stay here. And so he was here just about 20 years before this all happened. Most people can't fathom why somebody would start a fire. We had noticed uh, an increase in, in fire activity uh, to the Lake County area. We determined that there was a, a, a high number of roadside fires uh, in that uh, eastern Lake County area. While I was doing my fire investigations, I kept finding what I would refer to as a depression within the burned grass. What I perceived that to be was where something sat there and burned longer. For the longest time, I didn't find anything in those depressions. I started to theorize that it was something lightweight material, like a, a paper or a napkin or, or something, you know, disintegrating with the slightest breeze or just going away. So I, I kept finding that on, on a lot of those fires that I investigated. And so to have that hypothesis and to finally find it was just, to me, it was a, a great moment. We had one fire uh, that was investigated that was deemed to be arson, and we had the vehicle driving by that particular location, you know, within minutes of, of the fire being reported and, and, and seen. When we started to uh, see these roadside fires happening again, so we had to identify well, what vehicle now is being associated with these fires. Um, that took you know several weeks, and then we determined it was the same person. I remember finishing up that investigation. We were ready to make the arrest, but and it ended up going a couple more days. And then he lit the Clayton fire. For me, it was just stressful. I just like I wanted to to make the arrest and be done with this case at, at that point. And I, I ended up staying up all night, you know, kind of bouncing around on that fire. And sure enough, it it had blown up and it was starting to run through town so from that point on it was life safety so down there doing evacuation trying to get everybody out of there within 45 minutes i could see it coming through the back i could see the smoke and next thing i knew the cops were coming down the road with their bullhorn you have five minutes to get out mandatory you have five minutes to get out and I watched it from across the street, watched the town burn, and I knew where my house was, so I knew my house was gone. What do I do now? What do I do? That's what was going through my mind, and all the people that were standing there. Somewhere in my mind, I kept thinking I was coming back home also. Maybe I was hoping I was coming home, but I didn't get home.
my whole world just it's like it never happened like nothing the worst part is <laughs> this is of everything that I lost my children had baby pictures when they were born and they're gone and I'll never see them again ever and I can't replace them. And then when I found out it was a person that did that, how you just erase your life because this person thought it was funny or I don't know. I had to start over. I had nothing. There was nothing to save, nothing. 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 They were taking a sheet off the biggest picture in the world of David that he, they just caught the arsonist that caused all these fires. They hadn't even, he hadn't even been booked yet. Not even booked and they're ready to lynch him. It was a shock to me because really, Outside is where he was most comfortable, like out in the middle of nowhere, and it would be like you burning down your own house in, its, in its essence, you know what I mean? It's not, he didn't, I just don't, I don't see him doing that. And I just don't, I don't, I, I get that they want to call him an arsonist, but I really don't think that that's what he is. He's not like some fire bug necessarily, you know? But um, about second chances, if I thought somebody burned my house down, I wouldn't give him a second chance but I don't think he did. None of that on purpose anyway, so. I'm not uh, completely innocent in all this. Did I light all the fires that I was charged with? Absolutely not. Um, um, was I guilty of any of them that they were charging me of? Yes, they were. What were my reasons? My intention from, from the beginning of this was to, was to help, help someone's livelihood. Um, and it all went bad. I'm not a bad person. I'm not a monster. I never, I never, I never intended for anything. Like I said, anyone to get hurt or anything bad to happen. I was trying to help a friend, and and, and uh, it went bad. And um, um, on that note, they're gonna lock me down here in a second. I lost my husband, and then this too. It's sad. I don't have a grudge against him. I have nothing, nothing. He doesn't exist. I try not to think about it because it will consume you, and you can be put a hatred and bitterness in your heart. I can't do that. It is not easy. It's easier to go with it and be sad and bitter and mad. and But that's what you bring back to you then, and I can't do that. I don't want that. Mm -mm. You know, there's only so much you can let people take, and, and you have control over it. This, you have control over it.